Hey everyone, it's Carissa. Welcome to Saturday, where we're celebrating the weekend by getting our craft on. In today's Saturday, I wanted to share with you a fun idea for a family photo card for the holidays. Now, earlier this month, I shared another fun family photo card idea, so be sure to check that out, and I'll be sure to link it here as well so that you can check that out. But today's photo card features these envelope slider dies from the Essentials by Ellen Line. And what I've done is I've taken the larger of the two envelope slider dies, and I've gone ahead and cut that out of some craft cardstock from Hero Arts. And now I'm just folding it over on the score lines that are created from the die. So the die not only cuts the paper, but it scores the paper where you need to fold. And so I'm just folding those lines over and then reinforcing those creases with my Teflon bone folder. So once I had that all folded and ready to go, I went ahead and measured the width of the opening on the back side of that envelope slider so that I could create these fun little photo strips for my card. Now this photo strip is going to slide down into the envelope and then slide out. And you'll kind of see this come together in action here in just a bit. And so what I'm doing is I'm just trimming these down and I'm leaving a little bit of white space along the bottom of this photo strip so that I can put a stopper horizontally across this photo strip to keep it from pulling completely out of the card. Now for these cards today, I went ahead and used my home printer to print some of these out on cardstock, but for my final project, what I did was I went ahead and had these film strips or these photo strips professionally printed. So what I'm doing now is I'm finding out where I want this photo strip to stop. Once it comes all the way through the envelope, I want it to stop and I'm just marking that photo strip along the bottom so that I can create a stopper so that this won't completely pull out of the card. Now, if you didn't want to create this stopper, you don't have to. It just means that the photo strip would pull completely out of the card and they would be able to keep it. But I want this photo strip to stay attached within the card so that it is always a part of the card. So that's kind of an option you have here. And I've just created that stopper using some scratch Nina Solar White cardstock. The important thing to remember is it needs to be wider than the opening of your opening on your envelope slider so that it will actually stop the photo strip from coming out. So here we have it. I have my stopper along the bottom and now I'm figuring out where I want my envelope. So I want this film strip in place so that I can decide how far down that film strip can go and how much of the picture I want to be peeking out of the envelope. And once I get an idea for where I want this all positioned onto my card front, I'm going to remove the film strip from the envelope and I'm going to mark my card front through that envelope slider so that I can create an opening on this card front. So I just used a pencil and marked through that opening and now I'm taking my craft knife and just cutting along that line and then I'll cut just slightly over to the side of it parallel to it just to create the opening a little bit wider. So I've gone ahead and done two strips close to each other and now I'm going to cut across those strips and cut that piece out. So now I have an opening where this photo can go through the card front and sit behind this card front. So it will be hidden once it's all assembled. So now that my card front's all ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and add some stamping to it. This is gonna add a little bit of color, a little bit of texture. It's going to make it look like this envelope is sitting on kind of like this gathering of pine boughs. This pine bow stamp is from the Essentials by Ellen Christmas Scribbles stamp set. It is my favorite pine bow stamp of all time. It has like the perfect curvature and it's the perfect size. I, I don't know why it's my favorite. It just is. I, I find really good luck when I use this stamp. <laughs> So now I'm going to go ahead and add some of the score tape to my envelopes to assemble it. Now I actually ended up taking this apart to slide my film strip through so it would be a little bit easier. But I did use the 1 8 inch score tape to assemble it and I used a piece of foam adhesive on the back of that envelope to attach it to the card front. And here's where I'm going to open it back up because it was just easier to get my little photo strip through the card base and that envelope if I had it opened. And then I could go ahead and close it up using that score tape. So once I have that all ready to go, I'm going to flip this card front over to the back side and I'm going to add some foam adhesive. This foam adhesive is going to lift it up off of the card base, help that photo strip to slide out a little bit easier. And the little pieces of foam adhesive that I'm adding along the bottom right here actually create a stopper 
for that film strip so that it won't slide down any further than those pieces that are at the very bottom. And you can see here, I actually got some of my foam adhesive in the way of the sliding action of my photo strip. So I did have to move some of that around to prevent that from stopping the, the, the slider from sliding out. <laughs> I mean, that's the whole point of the card, right? And so I did have to kind of play with that. And I was glad I tested it out before I went ahead and put it on my card base. Now for my sentiment today, I am using the brush stroke piece die. This is from an earlier Essentials by Ellen release. And I'm also using this piece, it, it will say Peace on Earth. This on Earth stamp is from the Brushstroke Christmas stamp set, which is also a part of an earlier Essentials by Ellen release. And what I've done is I've just stamped it onto some licorice twist cardstock using some Versamark ink. I prepped that cardstock with some EK Success powder tool so that I wouldn't get any stray embossing powder where I didn't want it. Then I went ahead and added my super fine detail white embossing powder. I hit it with my heat tool to emboss it and then I took it over to my trimmer to trim that off. Now I wanted to show you that once you have one of these card bases all kind of figured out, it's very easy to create multiples because you can just line them up and trace through that slit that you've already created and create several of these card fronts. So once you kind of have all the measuring done for your first card, then it really does become a lot easier from there. So I decided I wanted these card fronts a little bit narrower. And since I already had my slit kind of lined up in the center, what I did was I just took these over to my trimmer and I just trimmed a quarter of an inch off of each side so that it was a little bit narrower. It will allow some of the card base to show. And like I said, I'm just showing you here that I created multiples of this and it really does become a lot easier once you get that first card created and you figure out where everything needs to go. It's a lot easier to get the stamping done, to get the cutting done, and it just kind of all falls into place. So I wanted to show you a little bit more closely how I ended up stamping these bows. I kind of made this crisscross pattern. And then I'm going to clean my stamp. And to fill in some of those blank areas, I am just going to ink the very tip of these pine boughs. So just, I don't know, the, the top or the end third or so of these, or half or so. I don't know. You can see what I'm doing there. It's about half of the stamp, I guess. And I'm just going to fill in those kind of blank areas to really create a full look behind this envelope that's there. So once I have, you know, part of that inked, I can go over and re-ink another little part and just kind of fill in some of those holes. So I ended up stamping, I don't know, maybe about eight times by the time I did the full pine bow and then the partials in there as well. So as I continued creating and I found my groove, I found that the easiest way to score this bottom fold because it's so close to that opening was to place my fingernails along that score line and kind of keep that from folding into that opening and then just score that over once I got it created. So I just kind of used my fingers as a buffer. You could also probably lay a ruler along that line to prevent that fold from going up into the opening that's there because it does get a little bit tricky at times with that bottom score line. So I have a few of these stamped and ready to assemble here. I am just sticking the little film strip through the opening on the card front and then sliding the envelope right down onto it so that I could get them perfectly positioned. You can see I added a little bit of red and white baker's twine to those envelopes in a little bow. I thought that was a really fun touch. And now I'm going to add some dimension to this brush stroke piece die cut that I have by stacking several of these on top of each other. So I've cut them using some peppermint cardstock from Basil. I've added a little zig two-way glue pin and I stacked about four or five of these up on top of each other to add a little dimension to that. And while I have that zig two-way glue pin out, I'm just gonna also use that to attach that stacked up die cut piece to my card front as well. And then I'll use a little piece of foam adhesive to attach that embossed sentiment below it so that it will say peace on earth there. So I have my die cut piece attached and then I'm going to go ahead and cut the end of this into kind of like a little banner strip. And then I'm going to position it onto my card using that foam adhesive. 
and then I'll trim it off afterwards. And that way I can be sure that I have this the exact length that I need it to be. When I stamped this, I did kind of stamp it more over to the left side of that paper so that I could have it, you know, towards the end. And then you'll see me just trim it off there. And that way I have the perfect length on that sentiment strip. Now for these other die cut words, these are from the Holiday Words die set. This is new from the Essentials by Ellen Line. They are a little bit bolder and like just wider. We won't call them fat because they're just a little big boned, you know, that's what I always say. I'm not fat. I'm not chubby. I'm just big boned. <laughs> so since they are a little bit more big boned, I was able to add some foam adhesive to the back of those to give them dimension. And then Again, I am going to add these little sub sentiments to them as well. For this joy to the world one, I decided to add this embossed sentiment kind of over the top of that joy die cut. I thought that was a really fun way to add it on there. And for the other piece one, I'm just going to add that just like I did with the brush stroke piece. Only this one has a little bit bolder and more modern feel. So I think both of them are fun options. And by the way, these holiday words, a lot of the die cut, the really big, bold die cut words that I see now, it's like the letters are separate. And so you have to place them all together. I love these holiday words, die cuts, because they are not separate. That word is all fused together. So you don't have to get perfect spacing on your letters. So you can see here I have a bunch of these assembled and then I decided they needed a little more sparkle. So I grabbed some glitter paper. It is not gold glitter paper as most of you would expect, but instead it is red glitter paper because what is Christmas without a little bit of red glitter? <laughs> So I've just added a little zig to a glue pen to the back of those and attached them right over the die cuts that I had before. I did that on the brush stroke piece as well as that joy to the world. And for that other one, I am just adding a little bit of the Spectrum Noir clear glitter brush pen right over the top. That's another way to add some sparkle to that die cut without using, you know, a more expensive paper like a glitter paper. I finished these cards off by just adding them to a craft wood grain card base. I added a little strip of red cardstock along the side and some sparkling clear sequins for a little more sparkle as well. So there you have it. It's a really fun, interactive holiday photo card design for you. You might as well put those holiday photos to good use because if you're anything like me, you tortured your kids and made them go out and take all those holiday photos. So you might as well use them on your cards and brag about your adorable loved ones. <laughs> As always, I will have links to all the products used in these projects in the description at YouTube, as well as over at the Classroom blog where you can see more still shots and get more information. All of the products used in this project are available for purchase at ellenhudson.com. Thanks for stopping by today. I hope you enjoyed these projects. And until next time, happy Saturday and have a fabulous day.